Hello and welcome to another video from the Hattrick Manager football series. We made a video back in March stating that we was chasing the top four. If you missed it, go check it out in the above link. Season 81 has now finished. Yes, we have done it. Finishing fourth place in Division 5. This means for the first time in four seasons, we don't have to play a relegation qualification match. Woohoo! If you enjoy football management content like this video, then hit that subscribe button. So we managed to get fourth place. How did we do it? Let's go find out. Right, so now we go into my Excel spreadsheet. If you haven't seen my videos before, this basically is in the game. You can pull a CSV player file. And what I do is I pull that off every Friday, crack it in here, and then that gives me week on week, kind of like analysis that I can just check up on my tracking of my training, check up on the value change of my players, and just get a better understanding of the game in total. Because end of the day, there's so many stats it's something that i used to do with football manager in this screen this is for training so i've highlighted where each player had a epping as we would call it and i've grayed out of the where they hadn't joined us yet and they started with a with a core stat of where they started and then you'll have a end stat at the end so without going into too much detail at player level so we started the season on defending that we had 67 stats. We've ended the season after training 122. That is a 55 increase and below shows the average. So average per player was sitting at 5.58. We are now 7.17, which is amazing because 7.17. So that means that on average we are solid defending in our team before this we was in between inadequate passable so really really good improvements there before we go into the values what is our next plan for next season we are going to be training defending again are we making money from these players simple answer is yes and this is obviously from when i was doing playmaking as well because i've kept some core players Pellegrini, Cochrane, Beria, and then I flogged off the rest. I kept Nescara Mente because he was cheap and he just had good stats anyway. And he was fairly young. And plus he cost me 667. Profit of 462. Massive, massive. So if I sold my team now, I would make 7.6 million profit. And I would bank 16.5 million, which is really, really good. Yes, there is a couple of losses, but then again, they are from like these two main ones. Of their core players, I knew that it was an investment for them to come in, perform as they get older. I knew their value was gonna decrease anyway, so that's fine. We will probably be selling David Ferk anyway this season, just one of the areas where I feel like that we could strengthen, maybe try and get 14 15 scoring in there to really, really have a really fantastic player. So these are now uh, oldest training players. I sold them, that would make me 5.7 million. Now for new players that I brought in are these ones here. Yes, they are making me a profit and I reckon that profit is going to be quite huge next season because he should be 10, 11, he'd be 11, 12 and he'd be 10. So you'd be looking probably in for millions there next season. At the moment they've bought, if I sold them, just one season, I've made 444,000. Just one season of training. We haven't even given them playmaking yet. We haven't even given them passing yet. Imagine once we finish this cycle, how much they're going to be. Amazing stuff. Let's go see if we can pull a youth player to bring in bigger bucks. Because that's what it's all about. Now that we've looked at our main team training, is there anyone that we could possibly bring into our first team from our youth team? So let's go have a look at that now. And as you can see, we are ready to call. I haven't called anyone for ages. Put my hands up, put my hands up. I've literally just been going in, setting up my team, pulling off the data that I need to update my Excel sheet with, or that you've already just seen, but I've completely forgot to go and do my youth. So we're going to quickly have a look, but we need to, because we've got 18 youth players, we need to have a quick look at who can we promote? 
So we can't promote these players. 81, 80, 63 days. So who have we got? Inadequate, inadequate. We know inadequate is not good enough. Passable is probably not good enough. We really want solids. Now, is there anyone? I'm just having a quick look. Is there anyone with a solid? No, 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 no. I just want to actually see it because I normally give them a shirt number if they're actually a good player. So he can't be promoted yet. Again, he's still a question mark, but we can't promote. So what I'm going to just do is actually just get rid of one of my old players. And to be fair, he's only playing a two, two and a half stars. He's not exactly one of my best players. So we are going to suck him. Yes. OK, so let's now call our scouts. In one of my earlier videos within Patrick series, we do go through. I think it's probably actually for first or second video within it. Just go back and watch them all. Go back, watch them all. 15 years old. Good. Disastrous passable keeper. Oh, he's a keeper. It's a shame that didn't say solid. And at 15, I probably would have got all excited. Passable is pretty good. Obviously, it was above inadequate. I'm tempted. Could we make any money from him? Nah, not really making anything, are they? Asking price, nothing, nothing, nothing. Yeah, 17 free. Yeah, just nothing. Okay. Would be great for my youth team in itself to get some results, but I don't really care about results in youth. Does results make any difference? Maybe it's something we need to find out, does it? If you're winning more, does that mean they will pop their skill better? If you know. Let me know in the comment section. Okay, back to our scout. I'm not going to take him. So we've got a 15 years old again, which is nice. And then a week, week. So no. And then we last one, uh, week, week 15. We have to take him. Again, just a reminder of the reason why we do take the last player. We have to take one player. Because what that does is that, that takes that one player out of the pool of where we're scouting or where we're trying to get to find these youth players. And it allows it to refresh with another new player who could be that wonder kid that we're all dreaming of trying to bring through to our youth teams. Uh, how we are doing, as I said, it's not really about results. We've won one in six. But we don't really try and achieve it, as you've just seen. We don't try and bring in better players to try and achieve better results because we don't know if that actually helps. Right, so probably for a bit where you've all been waiting to see how did we do in our season. Obviously, you know that we came fourth, but how did we achieve fourth place? This is how. Let's go have a look. OK, so we are now looking at the league table and there it is. I'll tell you what, I'm so happy because we've been in this division for four seasons now. And for us to break into the top four, it's like getting Champions League football for me. A, I don't have to do for relegation qualification match. And B, we got our objective that we set out. Well, we was chasing back in March, hoping that we was going to achieve it. And then I went, you know what, it, we're, we're nearly there. But is that really the most important thing at that time? And then for me to transition into my training cycle for the first time using the training cycle personally for me. And then for us to, in the same season for us to get fourth place is amazing. It's amazing. It's these little things. And I mean, it's a free, I don't pay anything for this game. And if you do want to join my league, as you can see, I can invite two people into this league. If you've never played this game before and you want to join up, come and join it. Come join my league. So for a way to, for me to invite you, send me your email address to duperdaddy at gmail.com and I will be happy to send you an invite. Achievements. So points. This is our biggest point tally. Last season we got 24, which was our biggest. This season we've got 25, as you can see. And then uh, goals for. So for goals that we scored, 36 versus last season of 34. And then lastly, winning for most games. Eight games we won versus last season of seven so i'm very very happy and again what's our next steps from this our next step from this is third and as you can see third place beat us by goal difference by three goals so maybe next season bring in that striker so top scorers we didn't get top scorer as you can see top place if the fc they had two top goal scorers in there but our one came so we got two in there eight goals each and that's Jose Birra and David Ferk. Jose Birra is our, one of our midfielders. He's not even a striker. And David Ferk is 
meant to be one of our better def uh, scorers. And maybe that's where we need to replace David Ferk. Because if our inner midfielder is scoring more goals than our striker, then as we always like to look at, it's the stats. So our progression of power rating, as you can see, we've shot right up uh, near the tail end of the season. We had a really good curvature going up. Did come down, but again, that was our transition. Our transition is now starting to pay off. So Newark Rangers, who we're now going to be chasing next season for third place, has dropped down. Then we've got us. Then we've got Helix, all very tight. And then miles ahead is Ifly FX Power. Maybe we need a super striker to really push us to the next level. So lastly, let's just quickly have a look at our matches. Cup, this wasn't our best season for Cups. Again, transition of our B team. We play B team. We don't play our A team in this. This is a training game, just like a our friendlies. And as you can see, for Big Cup, we got knocked out 1-0. And then we won 5-1, probably against a bot team. And then we lost 5-4. Really, really close game. Was unlucky not to qualify. And then we look at for leagues. So as you can see, our last five games, we drew to Helix, beat Husky, beat Newark Rangers, who are third. Remember that going into next season. And then just two really rubbish teams. So like I was quite shocked that we beat Newark Rangers 2-0, to be fair. Shame that we couldn't pull a win out of bag against Helix. Lost to Ifly 7-4. Really, really entertaining game. 7-4. Wow. 11 goal game. Should have watched it or should have shown the highlights. Um, if I watched it, I probably would have been having a heart attack. And then we lost to FX Power, who came second. 1-0. FX Power, we lost 5-1. Don't know what happened there. Then Ifly, we lost 5-3. Again, eight goals against Ifly. Both, both of us just must just see each other and go, yeah, I'll just go for it here. Maybe if they play it cool, uh, maybe I'd might need to play it match of the season and maybe I could nick something. I think that's maybe something I might have to do against those bigger teams. If I can do play it cool and then match of the season, play it cool, match of the season, um, it could see what it does. See what it does. Just to go further down. We started off the season, we beat Banana Bandits 4 0, then a 2 0 win against Bot Team, lost to Newark Rangers 2 0, but we got there, we got that revenge. Just, just missed it uh, by three goals. It's a shame. To be fair, I those last two games of the season, I played them on play at call. Maybe, maybe if I didn't play on call, we could have won maybe 12 0, 10 0 in those games and got third place. Just think of that. A lesson learned for next season. So, yeah, it really, really was a successful season. And I am very happy with it. And when things start clicking, it makes you want to play the game more. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.